Uh, that's what we used to do way back in the 1970s. <laughs> so it was like, check the oil because the engine was going to within 20,000 kilometres. <laughs> you know what I mean? You had one year warranty, that was it. Nothing after that. And you got to check it, you have valve clearances, all that sort of stuff. Check the transmission, it's going to shit itself because they weren't reliable. Cars weren't reliable. Uh, we, we forget how unreliable cars were. <laughs> but I still remember driving driving up the Hume Highway because I also grew up three hours north of here. And all along the highway, it was riddled with service centres, breakdown places, towing, windscreen replacement places, 24-hour windscreen replacements, radiator re uh, repair places because they all overheated. So you had overheating, you had flat tyres, and you had broken windscreens. That's what you had. That was the nature of the beast. And you had cars that would break down. So you needed lots of tow truck operators that were on call all the time on the highway. And every town, literally 50 kilometres apart, there was a good hub to, to take vehicles to get repaired. And you drive along on any given day and there'd be a car with a bonnet open, engine stopped. I don't know why. Right? You had... Points and plugs, or well, plugs still, but you still have plugs now, but you had points, leads, distributor caps, and also, you know, it's condensers that would fail. You had all these things that would just cause all sorts of problems. I've forgotten about that. With 30 years experience in auto logistics and state-of-the-art locations in five major Australian cities, Precar Fleet Services are a premier all-in-one solutions provider for commercial vehicle fleet operators, leasing companies, and original equipment manufacturers. Please visit precar.com.au and click on the link to Fleet Services. But then your early days of EFI was a disaster because you know, ECMs would just shit themselves or yeah, they'd put the ECMs in stupid places like at your, the feet of the passenger. So their feet are pushing down on the wires and it undoes the connectors so they can, the wires don't touch properly inside the connectors and then the engine just stops. So you had all of those things, you know, and and the reliability was not there with a lot of those cars. But, yeah, it's got better. Not perfect by any stretch, you know. There's still electrical demons that do kick in. You know, cars that have been submerged particularly have problems. A little bit of corrosion in a terminal, Ooh, there you go. It doesn't take much of a voltage drop to cause an engine, a car not to go or something not to work properly. We know that solid state items fail. So, you know, ECMs do fail. Sensors fail. But really, when you think about it, the, you know, the days of valves burning out, which used to happen all the time, valves burning out, pistons slapping away and wearing out cylinder bores you know, within 60, 70,000 miles, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. Cars run for three, four hundred thousand k's with very you know, engines. As long as you change the oil and make sure everything's in good condition, then you're in in good shape. Uh, I've forgotten about a lot of those things. You know, you sort of remember it, but you don't think about it because it's the same as South Africa. Every small town there used to be a tow truck, and you saw the big emergency numbers on the on the side of the yeah, highway. Yeah, yeah. I've broken down a couple of times. It's horrible. You know, this was 30, 40 years ago, and find those numbers and had someone. Come out, throw me in. It's the worst feeling. I still, I'm scarred with it. I, I broke down on the Hume Highway just north of Seymour in a little Honda Civic that I had, and it just stopped. It just stopped. What? Why? A full tank? And the ignition system had failed, but I didn't know which component. So I had to go by, I knew, I tested because I was doing all the diagnostics on the side of the highway, I knew I had primaries working, so voltage to the points. And I had voltage to the coil, and I knew if the points were opening and closing, so it was triggering the coil. And then I had voltage out of the coil, but I couldn't see what was happening from the coil into the distributor cap, the rotor button, then out to the leads to the spark plugs. So nothing at the spark plug. So I knew the problem was the from the coil lead to the distributor cap to the rotor, and then the leads to the spark plugs. So to play it safe, I just bought a set of leads, a distributor cap and a, and a rotor, went back to the car, replaced all those items on the side of the road, boom, started up, way it went, <laughs> and drove perfectly for the next four years. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's the sort of stuff that, that happens. You forget that that's what life was like. You know, you had silly things like, um, you know, when the first VN Commodores came out, the crank angle sensor would get hot and just open circuit because at the front of the engine. And how you fix it, get a watering can full of water, pour it over the, the front pulley, and it would start again. 
And away you'd go until it got hot again and it would stop. <laughs> so. But I think that's where I met half my mates at, at university. Because half the time my car wouldn't start. The other guys came out of lectures, I'd pull them across and I'd push my car to start. Anyone under 40 won't know what the hell you're talking about. No, exactly. Even anyone under 50 probably won't know what you're talking about. But people over 50 will know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> if you were driving in the 80s, you knew breakdowns. The 90s, not so much. Thank you for listening. Hopefully you uh, got some value out of the conversation. Well, thanks very much for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.